When your shaper system arrives, this is the package that you'll see. It comes with four shaper bars, 7, 9, 11, and 13. There are additional shaper bars available. Contact Blackstone Sports for additional shapes. This is your holder. It includes the bronze clamp. This is the adjustment knob, your collar, and your collar lock. Also included with your package is a balance gauge, as well as two thumb screws with two spacers. The first step when shaping a pair of skates is to find the balance point of the boot. Take your boot, the balance gauge, and a magic marker and line up the heel to the edge in the corner of the balance gauge. Now you'll notice on the balance gauge that there are two sets of the same numbers. There's a smaller version and a larger version. What we're going to do is we're going to find the toe point in the larger numbers and then find the middle point of the boot using the smaller numbers. Find if it's 85 here, we're going to find 85 in the middle. So we line up our heel to the boot. Get your magic marker. In this case, the toe is at 85. We're going to look in the middle, find 85, and mark the boot. The knob to the right side of the holder is the pitch, and you'll notice it's got a forward and reverse. There are increments from 0 to 8, both forward and reverse. I'm going to exaggerate and show you as we change these, you'll notice that the holder is actually pitching forward, and then if we go backwards, it's actually coming back towards us. So what that means when you're changing the skate if we exaggerate it, if we pitch it forward, what we're doing for the skater is pitching them forward on their toes. And if we reverse it, we're actually tilting them back on the heel a little bit. Moving your blade away from the cross grind and towards the cross grind is done by using the adjustment knob. You notice the adjustment knob is turning with the collar and moving uh, this front bar of the holder, which in turn is turning the bearing rods forward and away. So if we go counterclockwise, we're going to move the blade actually away from the cross grind, and if we turn it clockwise we're actually going to turn it toward we're going to move the blade towards the cross grind now why that's important is as we travel and we sharpen we're going to get further away from the base casting once we're done sharpening what we're going to do is we're going to unlock the collar by unlocking the collar we release the movement from the casting we're going to move the collar into the base casting until it can no longer travel. And why we're doing this is to make sure that the same amount of steel is moving, removed from skate number one as skate number two, which will keep your skater balanced. Once we reach it and we can't turn the collar anymore, we're going to lock that collar back into place. This can't move anymore, and now we've engaged moving the bars again. Now why that's good is now we're going to need to move the casting away because we're going to need to move the blade away from the cross grind again for our skate number two. Setting up your shaper bar on your machine, we're going to use the cross grind head, the two thumb screws and the two spacers along with our selected shaper bar. Take your thumb screw and place the spacer over top and insert it into the left or right side of the cross grind. Take your other spacer and your other thumb screw and insert it onto the opposite side. With your selected shaper bar, you're going to want to insert it in between the spacer and the thumb screw. Your shaper bar should rest on top of the spacer. 
Make sure you push the bar all the way to the back so that the thumb screw is snug to the front of the bar on both sides. If you don't do it um, secure, then you're going to change the radius you're putting on the skate. So secure the thumb screw on the blade until the blade is tight and it can't move and do the same on the opposite side. Now our shaper bar is secure and we're ready to shape the skate. Placing the boot inside your shaper holder. You'll notice that the top post is offset to the center, leaving the left side of the post directly in the middle of the holder. What we want to do is line up the left side of that post with our predetermined balance point that we have on our boot. We're going to line up our balance point with the top post. You also want to make sure that your holder is uh, holding the blade as far as possible. We place our bronze clamp, we tighten it down, and we're ready to shape the blade. We've already installed our selected shaper bar and we've already installed our boot. Now what we want to do is we want to determine the pitch that's already on the skate blade. In order to do that, it's not necessarily going to be starting at zero. So what we want to do is we want to line up to see how much. Now you'll notice here we're not quite hitting the cross grind. So we want to move it in to make sure that we're close. So I'm turning the adjustment knob clockwise and I'm moving the blade towards the cross grind. I'm going to move it towards and now I'm making contact so I want to pull it a little bit back and I'm going to consistently try to roll back and forth until I'm an equal distance from the wheel at the toe and the heel of the blade. Now, if you notice that there are some inconsistencies, so for example, you'll notice here there's a greater distance at the toe than the heel. I want to continue to adjust the pitch forwards or backwards in increments so that I have the same distance, the heel or the toe. Now once we determine that, then we can adjust that forward or reverse in the ideal position that the skater is looking for. So if they are feeling too forward, we make that adjustment. If they're feeling too far on their heels, we make that adjustment. Once you make the adjustment according to your client, then you're ready to shape the blade. Now we're ready to actually shape the blade. What we're going to do is we're going to turn on the cross grind and we're going to run the holder from left to right, heel to toe, back and forth. What you want to do is you want to make sure that you go nice and slow and you make small increments. It's really important to go nice and slow because as you shape your blade, it's going to heat up. If it heats up too much, it's going to swell and you're going to be taking off more steel than is necessary. So here we go. Okay, so what you're going to want to do, you'll notice that I'm not making contact with the cross grind yet. I'm making sure that I'm pressing on the casting to make sure that the bearings are pushed securely against the bar. So now I'm going to turn it clockwise and I'm going to make slight turns so that I make contact with the grinding wheel. I make a slight turn clockwise. And as I turn clockwise ever so slightly, I'm going to make more and more, more and more contact with the blade. I turn it slightly. Turn it a little more. Continue making passes back and forth until you make complete contact with the blade surface on the ice.
Now that we finished shaping our first gate, it's time to shape our next. So what we're going to do is remove our boot, place it to the side, and we're going to adjust the collar. So we're going to unlock the collar, and we're going to move the collar all the way into the holder. You can hold it. I'm holding it to make sure it just doesn't spin. Now I can't turn my knob anymore because the collar's reached the end of the um, pace, uh, base casting here. So now I'm going to lock it in place in this little channel. And now I'm going to pull the entire blade back. I'm moving the bearings out. So that way when I place my new blade on my balance point next to the left side of the post, I'm ready to sharpen. I mean shape. After you're done shaping the bottom of your blade, now it's time to sharpen. What you're going to do is while you sharpen, that will naturally blend in our new shape with the blade.